the uh, they won the open qualifier and open qualifier China must have been really hard so I think they must be in pretty good shape as a team and holy shit that's a bat rider first pick Ten seconds to go. bat rider Renessa <laughs> Sleeping Beauty Cosp. Radiance Band. Yeah, I don't have time to get ginger tea. Good night. Um, so yeah, SF Bounty first two. We saw Tong Fu play earlier against um, HGT, and they got completely annihilated. So it seems like they have changed up one of their openers. They're opening up with Bounty Hunter now. They banned the Wisp Dirge because Super plays a really good Wisp. Super was one of the first Wisp players in China, if I recall correctly. Uh, after, well, actually, the first one was MMY when he played with Ehome, but after that, uh, Wisp fell off for a long time, and then Super was the one to play Wisp. I met Kuroki at TI1. Um, and Mouse Sports too. Who do, you, who do I think wanted to throw that last game more? I don't know, dude. That was some that was some crazy stuff happening. I think I've casted like six games already. It's quite surprising. Um, so Spectre, Morphling, Ben. I know that... Uh, XDD, I think. Wait, let me look really quickly. I think I'm I'm thinking of the wrong player right now. But wow, Gyrocopter gone to the third pick. This is very new for Chinese Dota that Gyrocopter would be picked so late. Um, I would never expect Gyro to go this late. It's like first pick material normally, but it seems like Tongfu didn't want Gyro. They wanted Shadow Fiend. Maybe they have another strategy instead. But Gyrocopter overall is just a really good hero at this game, especially with Damn, Visage on the go. other team. Um, let me seconds. really look quickly. Reserve time. Okay. Radiance pick. So yeah, XCD is the Morphling player. He plays a lot of Morphling. Um, I just had to make sure that he was the one that I was thinking of. <sighs> Dyer's pick. Lion pick. So Lion vicious support, Jarcopter, probably safe lane carry. Batrider offlane. I'm really interested to see why they first picked Batrider, how they're going to play this Batrider because as far as I know everyone has abandoned the idea of Batrider. Like this hero's damage nerf was such a big deal. Ten seconds to go. Five seconds. Reserve time. <clears throat> Ten seconds to go. Flying strats ruined Winter Wyvern and Phoenix. That could have been pretty interesting. Legion Commander. Again, Tong Fu draft the Legion Commander. I'm not exactly sure what they see in this hero, but... It's the third game in a row that they've drafted LC, and it's quite interesting, because the way that they played LC didn't seem Damn any different than what, how anyone else would play LC, so Five seconds. it seems that they still have strong feelings for this hero, and they keep drafting it, so time. maybe now we will see exactly how they want to play with it. 
Legion Timber incoming. I don't think they're gonna pick Timber again this game though. <laughs> yeah, it's probably a safe in storm. They will still need another hero to support it because if they don't, uh, Wings can just go aggressive try lane against it. Because Bounty Hunter is the support, uh, like a roaming support hero in this game. And Viper, ooh, so. It looks like it is an aggro trial-in with Gyrocopter and Viper mid. <laughs> I think that would be the best choice for them because they see that this Storm in the safe lane. Storm safe lane is just not good at all. Even though Lion isn't the best aggro trial-in hero, in this case he would be good because you're against Storm and Storm always has to walk up to Remnant for last days and things like that. So, ah, Keeper of the Light, okay. But I still don't think Keeper changes much from going aggressive trial-in. So they can still do that. Uh, I wonder when Kabu became the carry player for Tung Fu. That's really interesting. He's always played offlane or support. Never seen him play carry, so. Most boring here in game Viper. Depends who you are, man. I think Viper, a lot of some people do enjoy playing Viper. And it's not that bad. All right, let's look at what we have here. No one's bought any items yet. Bat Rider does have boots, which makes me think maybe he is not going into the safe lane 1v1. They do pick the Legion Commander though against Bat. At least they have that. Legion Commander can remove Bat Rider Lasso with his heal. So that's okay. And he can 1v1 against Bat Rider because he can remove Napalm stacks. Which is also good because Bat Rider is very much dependent on the Napalm stacks. This new one with. Uh, nerfed Firefly and Flame Break. Okay, so Bad Rider is going to the offlane. They won't be going aggressive, Charlene. They they do have dust on Visage, so they plan to kill this bounty hunter if he tries to screw with them, which isn't so bad. But I still feel like they should have went aggro because Jaro aggro against Storm Caudal is gonna be insane. Uh, they like. The only bad side to that is that Bounty Hunter has free reign over the safe lane and the mid lane. I guess maybe it's not that good of an idea because if they go safe lane they can just win the safe lane and then the supports can help out the mid lane and the Bounty Hunter won't have really have a game to do much. Bounty is gonna block a camp once more. Sentry, interesting. That's a really early sentry as well. So Elsie has boots level one, and Bounty has the other word. The way these guys go for runes is feel so underwhelming like they just know that the opponents are in their safe lane and they just leave one hero there or something but what if they weren't all there what if there was like three heroes here and then you just bam going on the shadow feed and just storm chilling there <sighs> then you're in all kinds of trouble but that's okay I'm sure they've all scrimmed against each other multiple times and they understand how each other plays so they just no, they won't do these kind of moves. They will just take the runes and back off. <clears throat> so it's gonna be a Viper versus Shadowfin matchup mid. Shadowfin does not have the. He's going for a bottle rush build, it seems. So he will go raise his level 1. Viper has Wraith Ban, so he has quite a bit of damage. He can do really well against the Shadowfin, but he always has to worry about the Bounty Hunter being mid, which means they need to. Place a sentry ward on mid lane for sure. Who has the other sentry? Batrider? No, they placed the sentry right. Placed it here. 
So they wanted to see if the bounty ran into the jungle or not from there, but he already had boots, so he ran in there much faster. So yeah, maybe it was a waste of a sentry, maybe not, but they do get to see if they placed the ward there. Vestage will block mid lane. It's really nice. It all depends on who blocks the best because this matchup is very block dependent as well. So SF will have the better block, which means he might even start with Necro Mastery here. No, he'll start race. Yeah, oh god, the ra the perfect world lag has begun once more. Missing animations and stuff. So they do start mana leak against Batrider often. That's pretty interesting. It's very good because they just drained 150 mana that without him even casting a single spell. And it seems that he had to scale Firefly. I'm not sure if that's the best move, but okay. And it only does like 10 damage a second. It's, it's such a bad spell now. <laughs> It's very unfortunate. I'm really interested to see how they want to play this Batrider with this Firefly nerf and stuff. Or this nerf Batrider in general. I mean when it comes to like 20 minutes in the game or 30 minutes in the game it's the same Batrider as the, first, the one before but his early game is like so nerfed. And I wonder how like it got double, double waved as well. Maybe I should have looked at top more. <clears throat> so LC also getting quite a lot of XP, but mainly because Bounty Hunter has been a nuisance in the jungle. It's pretty good for him. I'm wondering if he thought about going for the courier. Like this is the thing about Bounty Hunter. Every time you play against Bounty Hunter, you're always afraid that he wants to snipe the courier. But the uh, the visage just saw the bounty pick up the invis bottom, so he's like, yeah, he's bottom, and then the viper just gets this courier. <laughs> but had he not shown, was it if he was invis and then picked up the invis run, the viper would have never got his Aquila because he would always be afraid that his courier would get sniped, and he would get it once it's upgraded. So Batrider gets Bounty Top, he's doing quite well, he's actually level 3 and 150 XP, which is really good in my opinion. <laughs> I didn't even think that he would be able to get this much out of the offlane. Even though the supports are Storm Spirit and Kono. <laughs> right, oopsies, apologies for my CS stats. <laughs> <clears throat> Viper doing really well. <clears throat> I like the Aquila uh, first purchase instead of like just having Wraith Band only. It really helps uh, for last sitting against Shadow Fiend and stuff. <laughs> Gains like an extra 9 damage. And you can also push out the lane if you need, turn it on. And it'll make it harder for Shadowfin to last it too if you want. So Jarcopter, actually not doing that well. Um, he only has 17 lastits. But it could be because he's been like trying to last it under tower and uh, pressure or try to push out the uh, LC. So that could be the main reason why. <clears throat> Body Hunters just wants his level 2 so he can even try to go behind the mid creep wave and try to slide the courier. If he has uh, his second spell, Janata, he can actually kill the courier in two hits. Gonna use Firefly, but it's actually gonna lose quite a bit of mana. But it doesn't matter, cause 
The level one bounty hunter just gonna die straight up like that. Oh, nice dodge. He did not have it, uh, the cooldown to cast another um, static remnant there. But that damage though, the um, onto the level one bounty hunter. He did not expect the lion to be on top, and he just wanted to harass. But right now, this bounty feels like not that useful. Because he's not getting any levels, he's not really accomplishing much apart from just being a nuisance early game. I think he pretty much removed like 10 last hits from Gyrocopter or something. And slowed down Viper's Aikila by like 10 seconds. But apart from that, he hasn't really done much more. It's more of like the factor that there is a bounty hunter in the game. Um... So yeah, it's Viper doing very well. Mid lane. And Shadow Fiend is actually the one who has like an uphill ward. If Viper had an uphill ward, this matchup could be even worse for the Shadow Fiend. <sighs> Maybe they will try and get him one soon. Level 7. At least now that SF is level 7, he can just jungle. Seems like there's already one stack for him. Oh, here comes the lion. Just impales and walks away. They know that they placed the ward because SF just pinged that there was a ward there. I think the 404 storm build is quite good. It's, um,. So Bounty does get one hit on the Karya, but he does not have the Janata. If he had Janata, that Karya would have died. I'm actually surprised he doesn't have it. He's killed Shuriken Toss. Like, this skill build doesn't give him good um, mana efficiency. He can't actually cast everything. So if he had Janata there, that would have been a Karya snipe for him. But he doesn't, so that's really unfortunate. I, actually, that could have been... Why he was doing really well. Um, and now they're gonna get a double kill return. Well played by Mr. Gyrocopter. And that Janata didn't really do much again once more. Elsie probably thought that they could take him on because the bounty said he was coming, but he probably didn't know that the bounty was just level 2. And level 2 bounty's damage output is abysmal. <clears throat> Stacks. About time. I feel like this mm, bounty hunter pick right now is just not playing out well for Tongfu. They can snowball if he would ever get to like level 6, but right now all his lanes are not doing as well as they could be. Like, the SF has to really catch up a lot because he didn't do that well against the Viper. Storm is doing okay, but this is pretty much on Storm's back this game. Um, it all depends on his next few moments, how he will play. Oh, Bounty, if he will steal all this XP here, it's going to be really good, actually. This is some really nice XP for him. Top towers hurting. Okay, that was pretty good. Radiance top towers in bad shape. Viper was about to TP top, decided against it. Bat Rider, 1000 gold, almost has dagger. Nine minutes in though. I remember the old Bat Rider can actually just buy a dagger at nine minutes and he's already ready to gank, but. I guess this is the fault with the nerfed Batrider. Storm gonna go on the lion. He still has a stun, so if he does ball in, this could be really bad. Okay, just kidding. Um, he is not able to get the stun off in time. 
and just get a free kill instead. So, like the normal Chinese build, it's going the tanky Bloodstone Storm Spirit, which is not that bad. Um, I'm really hoping that they would he would try to uh, move around a bit more and go for a gank and maybe even buy a bottle. Bottle's still quite nice on uh, safe and storm. Ah, he just saw that courier, right? He's gonna try to snipe it now. Oh, nope, it's gonna run around. Oh, how unfortunate. Okay, so they place a sentry, it's not really gonna do much. Waste of a sentry, I would think. Um, but one thing to point out, Vistage has mana boots. That is not something you see every day. I saw this before TI3. Vistage just used to buy mana boots and mech, but seeing it now is very weird. Because like something like Medallion would be amazing, or Point Booster, or even a mech, I guess that's fine too. But Viper is going mech, so you don't actually need mana boots on Visage at all. If you have one stick, you can cast as many soul assumptions as you wish. So Elsie, gonna get dove here. Kotal is actually TPing in. They're actually all TPing in. This is a really bad place for Wings to be. Depends on how they engage right now. So, it looks like Storm Sh Batrider is going to be the first one to fall. Shadowfin gets his ult off. Visage is dead. Jaro is dead. How in the world do they just die like that and expect to come out alive? What just happened? Holy shit. They just gained like a thousand gold. That was so insane. I, I actually have no idea how a team can just run in into this place when it's daytime. So everyone, you can always see all the um, heroes that are running in. And it's not like Wings heroes are like super good in between tower or this tower was super low health and it would just die. They just TP it in, blasted, storm, killed Bat super fast because he's safe lane and he's free farming. He can deal a lot of damage. And he has a pretty big mana pool as well. That was actually some insane shit right there. So phase and drums um, completed on Joe. Oh wow. Okay, he's just gonna ball away. Koro though, he ran in to maybe try and man leak, but no. Nope. You definitely can make those kind of plays when you're playing Kodo. Like, you have to be the one furthest behind, of course. And I don't think Storm would have died. He had, like, a lot more mana left. It was nice if he didn't die, because they would have baited a TP. But in return, they do lose the tower. So mid lane. Batrider might try to go for a grab here. They need, they might, I think they might need a TP, though, to finish him off, because he has stick and mech. Oh, just kidding. They do have finger. That's pretty nice. Are they gonna get a Janata? If he gets a Janata off and he kills him, it's gonna be his level six. Oh, that's really nice. Actually, um, that kill on the Shadow Fiend didn't really mean much because the bounty got a return kill and hit level six off it. So it's really, really good for him. Um, so all wings wanna do is five man with the Mech Visage Birds and Gyrocopter spells pretty much and I think I'm beginning to understand more of why they wanted the Batrider pick it's just people kind of forgot how to play against the Batrider and when you fight man Batrider is like a really nice hero to just threaten the opponent so they don't want to try and uh, they don't want to try and defend the towers <laughs> so he finished his bloodstone. It's a pretty good timing for Storm. Well, actually, he didn't finish it. I thought that was a recipe for his bloodstone. He still needs his recipe. <clears throat> um. So smoke coming out, they want to go behind the tower, maybe get a kill, just surround it and take it. 
when you play against Kotal, it's really hard to just try and push from the front because he's just gonna keep spamming you. Oh, nice! This spell from the Legion Commander, the Lasso. And they can actually turn this around now if they want, but... Storm not grabbing the Lion. He's gonna get instantly hexed and die. And now, Tom Fu are gonna be the ones falling. I think there's a third time the Storm did that where he jumps very short and just ends up getting caught by Lion. Or has to use a bit more mana than he actually should be. <clears throat> but yeah, what I was saying was when you're playing against Koro, you can't just keep pushing from the front. You need to try and surround and uh, get a pick off on him or another hero and then take the tower. Because if you surround the tower, Koro can't blast from behind the tower. <clears throat> so that was the play Wings wanted to make. They just smoked up, went for it. Even though Legion Commander was like in the perfect place to dispel the Koro, the storm fucked up on his uh, jump in and just instantly died pretty much to the gyrocopter rocket barrage ultimate hello Petzl <laughs> how do I get back into America marry an American woman <laughs> that's 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 your best solution are you watching from China? Isn't it super laggy? <laughs> so Wings playing the 5 man objective gaming, gonna go for the 3rd tower, Tung Fu just trying to do what they can and uh, try to go for another tower but because they took, they, Wings will take top tower faster, they're gonna try and attempt to maybe defend or deny but it did not work. So Jaro is actually really close to BKB, which is quite nice. Actually, the Shadow Fiend is in the same position. So I would say this game is quite even, purely because uh, the Shadow Fiend's farm is quite nice. And if if Tung Fu would just get one or two kills with Chuck, that would completely change the game in their favor. But I feel like Wings as a team make uh, better calls and they are, seem to be playing more as a team as well. So Tung Fu go bottom very fast, take up the tower. Wings did not expect that they would uh, move so fast for the last tower and they've pretty much tied it up in map control overall and I think this is very good. Uh, Storm just finished his Bloodstone. They can actually just go Roshan right now because they have pretty high levels of Presence of the Dark Lord but already they have Bright Scouting. Wings expect such movement. <clears throat> I think when you don't show on the map for so long eh, everyone always uh, automatically assumes you're doing Roshan so it's hard to do that I guess. Especially when you play against Batrider. Batrider is like the king of uh, fighting against Roshan. Roshan attempts. <clears throat> oh, he could have actually grabbed him there. That would have been really good. But uh, he decided to back off. That sucks. <clears throat> I don't think he won Invis. But yeah. If you see how wings move around the tower like this, it's really good because it doesn't really give Koro the best opportunity to blast. They did some more damage than they normally would be able to, I would think. They're playing so aggressively. They have a BKB on Jaro, so they know. Oh, they removed. No, they did not remove. They just altered the Batrider. And the big call down. The bird is actually doing a lot of damage from behind. Shadowfiend gonna get chased down. The storm already ran away. He went for the viper. Which is... Might have been a mistake. Because I feel like viper would have ran away anyway. And the Shadowfiend and storm together could have just taken on the gyrocopter. But instead I feel gyrocopter came out ahead in that fight. That was really interesting. It's one of those moves where like you ditch your teammates to go for an easy kill. But it's not the best kill for sure. Alright, so that storm came in and like dropped the remnant. 
ultimate. A really fat ultimate. So Storm jumps in, does all the damage to these three heroes, drops a remnant, and they all just, all three of them just die instantly. And then it's pretty much two versus five. Um, and here it is, the Storm goes after the Viper who already ran away, but instead he can fight with the Shadow Fiend, the Gyrocopter, instead. And the Viper is sort of fucked up, I think he went high ground and missed an attack or something. Yeah, he missed two attacks, oh my goodness, if he stayed on the high ground he would actually have killed the Storm. Just like that, and that would have been fine too. But Storm got 12 Bloodstone charges right away, he just bought Bloodstone. 12 charges, that is super good for Tongfu too. So Jaro came out ahead in... <clears throat> when it comes to gold, but... As scaling into the game, Storm was definitely the victor because of the bust on charges. They are so important. Um, right now, if he would die, he would just respawn instantly and would be in the fight again. And that would ruin wings because a lot of the heroes are quite squishy, like Lion, Bat, and Visage. We saw what happened in that one fight. He zipped in for a shit ton of damage, dropped Remnant, and they just all popped. Storm, seeing what he can find, oh, will he find the lion, did he see the lion? Oh, he did see the lion, but he got hexed up again, oh no, oh nice heal, he's gonna actually dodge the finger there, that's a pretty big deal, bounty hunter's dead, but Storm has to run back, uh -huh. But I mean, they saved the storm, which is good, because you don't want to waste your bloodstone charges. Especially when there's no tier 2 tower for him to TP to and zip into the fight once more. But the moment when your storm runs out of mana and he's running away, you can't keep fighting anymore, because you know he can't join the fight. But if he dies and then he respawns, then he can obviously keep fighting, because he can just TP back into the fight. But it's not so bad, you did just lost one bounty hunter who's pretty much been, like, just food anyway. 200 gold for one bounty hunter kill, it's like nothing for them. BKB Shadow Fiend, no. The Shadow Fiend could have had BKB much earlier, but that one death probably set him back quite a bit. Because I think when I last looked, he had like a thousand gold off and he just finished it. And Jarcopter finished BKB and SNY, holy shit. Actually, yeah. When Jaro was 300 off BKB, Shadow Fiend was 1000 off, and now Shadow Fiend finishes BKB, but Jaro got BKB and SNY. Bounty Hunter? Did he get healed? Nope. Bounty Hunter is gonna die right away though. Gyrocopter still has all. BKB on, they're gonna go on the line with Storm. That's a pretty good move for him, but. Why doesn't he just zip away, guys? Zip away further. Oh my god, if he died. Okay, he's not dead. Um, So they trade 3 for 2. Storm is healing up. Can Koro bring him back? Alright, Koro can bring him back. Maybe they try for a big jump here. No, they can't. They don't have any vision either, so. Or else he might try to go for the visage. But yeah, it's kind of weird to see Storm Spirits play without um, Bottle as well. I think even for Safe and Storm, Bottle is super nice. Top. This LC is like actually quite farmed. I think it's doing quite well. I'm just surprised he's not using the press the attack more on the Bat Rider lassoed units, but he's using it more on himself and jumping in to ult people. 
At least he got damage in the last fight. That's good. Big duel, big duel. And track gold. 553 gold for bounty plus more, I think, because track. I don't think track ever shows. 1200 gold, 750 for bounty. That's pretty nice. So Viper just getting caught out like that. Not good. You really can't be getting caught out when you're playing against Bounty Hunter. He's gonna make like a... What's it called? Veil. <laughs> With this build, I think. And Veil is like a super nice item for sure. No, he's going Medallion instead. Alright. I think Veil is extremely good when you got like Storm, Shadow Fiend, LC, Coddle. All these heroes do so much magical damage. And wings already have like really squishy heroes. If you just veil them, they can get super screwed. But medallion is all right. Not as good as veil, I would think, in this game. Solo crest, on the other hand, is really good because you can solo crest. Actually, no, you can't. It's just gonna build MKB anyway. You can solo crest viper. That's good. Then you can just take him out, because he's not actually building Aghanims. Hmm, interesting. No Aghanims on Viper. I think Aghanims would be a good item this game. Just to throw it on Shadow Fiend all the time. Guess what's happening to Dyer's bottom I feel like Shadow Fiend's farm has been halted quite a bit. But I guess he did die in the last fight as well. So, he did finish his BKB. I think uh, this item was probably the right choice for the storm because he's already getting a lot of bust on charges. And uh, BKB just means that he doesn't have to worry about Lion. He can just jump in and go on the Lion, and Lion will just end up feeding to him. 700 HP Lion has nothing on the storm spirit, which just zips in. Especially if it's a level 16 storm spirit, it goes by so fast. Sometimes you can't even blink away from it, especially if it's nighttime. <laughs> and uh, with bounty hunter track vision, you can always get vision of the lion who's just chilling in the back, trying to wait for a good engagement. So if it's not lion, he's gonna want to kill the bat, and bat will also just die straight up to a BKB storm spirit. The storm actually does a lot of damage, as it is. But he needs to really get to level 16. The spell becomes insanely powerful then. Very fast. So he built Manta on Viper. I mean, he can remove track, but that's pretty much the only purpose I see for this Manta. I don't see better purposes, to be honest. And track is like a 5 second cooldown, or 4 second, sorry, 4 second cooldown spell. So it's not like something that matters a lot to remove. I wonder if Tung Fu have been using the track ability to see how much gold the opponent has. That would be pretty interesting. I don't think anybody has been using that in any way at all yet. Or maybe they have. So Gyrocopter, MKB. He's actually extremely farmed. He's He is 11 and 1 after all. I feel like Tung Fu right now can't deal with him. Like, they don't have the damage output or something. The only way I see them working is like he bla LC blade mills and jumps the Jaro by himself. And he doesn't like, yeah, he has to uh, jump the Jaro before B BKB Jaro with blade mill. Blade mill can be the saving grace. Ooh, nice heal. 
That's a freaking long cast range. What the hell? I did not know that the cast range was that long. Because normally you always use it on yourself. You never know how long the cast range is. And rip battle header ultimate is gone. And that is a pretty crucial ultimate. So I wonder what the storm will be by next. Let's see. Lincolns? Lincolns is good for damage. I don't think you can buy orchids. Hex is also good. Ah, I like Hex. Hex the gyrocopter. S and Y on Shalafiend. So visit your medallion afterwards. Spadrider has pretty much stopped farming. He won't be having a BKB anytime soon, but BKB is probably necessary for him to survive from the storm spirit. <laughs> Wings, favorite Chinese name because of the name. Wings is a pretty cool name, I would say. Trouble brewing at Radiant's bottom tower. So his bounty has not gained much gold in a while. Keeper of the Light slowly farming up his uh, Agonims while he buys all the vision on his team. I just realized that uh, Dyer's vision is pretty much non-existent. I think all their other games too, their vision wasn't very good either. Um, it's one of the reasons why I don't believe Tung Fu will place very well in this tournament. Like Vision is such a important aspect to any team and this team undervalues it greatly. Feels like. So they get some extra damage on LC, that's quite nice. And all of a sudden they can try and go for the one by one pickups. Lion though, interesting enough. Storm, Hex gets purged off. Gyrocopter's inside there, all his flax are used though. But he's still doing a shit ton of damage, holy shit. And Viper did buy back for this, so... A storm will get out just fine. So Viper bought out for that, right? Yeah, he did. So, they get a couple track kills, which is good. But SF dies. But Viper also died. It's quite even, cause but they did get track kills, so it's not that bad for them. Uh -uh. Cause Viper had to end up buying back, and buying back with Viper is always super miserable. But you can see this gyrocopter is like so powerful. He uses all all his flax, but he still does a shit ton of damage. Three hundred damage a hit. It's gonna go satanic now, and now he's truly unkillable. The only thing is they need to wait till Gyrocopter BKB is like 5 seconds, and then they can actually deal with him. I mean, the later this game goes, I feel Storm is like getting way too powerful. He still has 18 blast on charges, so the first time he will die, he will instantly respawn, TP back, and ball in with max. Ball lightning, it's gonna do a shit ton of damage. Ooh, what a what an unfortunate double damage for Tongfu. Somebody pick up my drums. Whoa. No, alright, at least he BKB'd. He can go for the line right now. He should go for the line. Oh no, that was a bad jump in my opinion from start. If he would jump downwards and go for the line, that could have been still a decent fight for them because he would kill him and he would still have mana to get away because Lion is the only hero who can disable him after BKB. 
nothing else wings have will affect them in any way but the storm jump in was pretty bad to begin with because he jumped in after the rush and died if he wants to get Aegis he has to jump in before rush and dies let's see what item he's building okay shows nothing Scotty next for the shadow thing that's good Scotty's good if you have SNY and Scotty and you hit the Jarl and they prox maim and then the Scotty so he's gonna attack very very slow his damage output is gonna diminish by quite a lot my lyrical you're that wisp player I remember I found the trick to winning when you uh, the 6k average plus games don't you worry you won't win again <laughs> well, I remember everyone I lose to So he actually went for the Yoz on bet, not BKB. That's really interesting. I wonder why he went for the Yoz actually. He probably wants to use the uh, Legion Commander. If uh, yeah, he have, if uh, yeah. mm. the Jaro or Viper ever gets grabbed because he doesn't want the blame or damage to ruin him. Oh, Kabudo, Kabudo, Kabudo! This is not how your Bloodstone charges were meant to be used. Oh no. That sucks, cause like I really thought I had high expectations for this uh, first Bloodstone loss. I really thought that. Oh, but the Jaro does get jumped. He still has Aegis, so he's gonna BKB right after this. Actually, it doesn't even need to. They're just gonna go high ground now. They know that Bounty is dead. LC used his uh, ultimate. Um, nope, they won't go high ground. They're gonna back off. Possibly because Batrider does not have a lasso. It felt like a good place to try and deal some chip damage, but maybe they're just too afraid of the storm level 3 ball lining job dealing too much damage to them. And they don't have Aegis, so they probably don't feel so secure. This Legion Commander, though, he's actually getting really farmed. Or, not really farmed, but he is farmed. I didn't expect this Legion to have this much. But if he does ever get to AC, it's gonna be a really good... It's gonna be really good for Tong Fu. Because he has, he has some decent damage, too. So, Scotty... AC and Hex, I think that's what Storm wants. Lincoln's is fine too, but Hex might be a bit better. Ah, it's questionable. I think Lincoln's is nice too. But Batrider has Yos, so he can break Lincoln's with Yos and then grab. Yeah, probably Hex is a better choice. Just go in Hex, Jaro, and then Alt Jaro with LC, stuff like that is quite nice. Yeah, he bought the hex. Viper, talisman. I'm just gonna make him really tanky. <sighs> Even if it wasn't already annoying. They should honestly just ignore Viper in every fight. Uh, if you're Tong Fu. You definitely just try to find Lion. Try to find Visage. If you can catch Jaro first, that'll be really good. Oh, wow. Okay, so are they waiting for other people to TP before he goes on this? Because this is a fucking disaster. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. What to expect? Oh, Jaro makes a safe play of just ulting the creep wave. Instead of risking himself, 
die to oh, oh maybe this way maybe this way ah uh, they're not patient enough to go again they don't see anyone on the map so there's no point for the job to just go out there and try to farm because you get super fucked up for sure And the farming continues. How come these games are starting to get longer? It's just so weird. I don't even think it's a hero thing or whatever. It's more like a pressure thing. You're playing at a LAN for TI qualifier. You just want to make all the safe plays always. But actually the safe team will never be the one that will win. If you're super far ahead, of course you can make the safe play and then eventually you'll win. But these games are like... Not even that far ahead, you still need to make some risky plays, some moves. Because this Jaro is soon to be like capped. Well, actually, not really, he has a slot for Butterfly. If you all get the Butterfly, he would be insanely farmed. Because, oh wow, he went Abyss, I mean Heaven's Halberd. Holy shit. And there's no MKBs or anything either. So Shadowfiend needs like his Scotty, then he needs an MKB. He needs to like TP the fuck out right now though. Alright, there we go, he's out. He's probably feeling super scared, especially with Dyer's vision. They don't buy words. They actually just don't buy words. What? Did he not see that one? I think he saw that one, he just doesn't want to kill it right now because he would fuck him up. But yeah, Gem and Aghanim son Kodo. That's pretty nice. He farmed it he farmed all that up. They're just creeps. No one really helped them. Like that's what I don't like about this bounty hunter guy. He like he picks himself bounty hunter. He doesn't play that well and then he just doesn't buy words either. He just like does his thing and I don't know what his thing actually is. I'm quite disappointed with this player. I feel like if you're already dying like this, it's probably better that you help out the Kodo by vision, get vision on the map and then Kodo just gets agonims and you just win through the game because you're taking the role of the fifth position and doing stuff, useful stuff, instead of just running around and only tracking people. You can do two things at once, ward and track. It seems like he's gonna buy a vanguard or something. I, I don't know how that's possibly the best build. I mean, vanguard obviously gives him some more HP, but if he has solar crest, he can solar crest the viper and Viper isn't attacking anymore. Or you can solar crest your Shadow Fiend and then only Jaro can hit him. And the birds can't hit him. It's like he has a butterfly. Solar crest is a good item. Or you can buy a bail since opponent only has one BKB hero anyway. And everyone else will get super fucked by a bail. Cause Storm will zip in, deal so much magical damage, LC nuke, Shadow Fiend not. All super good. So bad Twitter. Is he, who's he gonna go on? Is, is there a heal from LC? Nope. Oh, he he did not get the heal. But they do have. LC did ult the gyrocopter here, but he says satanic. Oh man. He's satanic. Um, it's so hard to see what's happening in this fight. Storm died. Gyro died. Shadowfiend is still alive. Storm says 20 seconds before he respawns. But Shadowfiend is dead. And Koro does get away with the gem though, that's pretty good. Gyrocopter buys back, bots in, so he bought bots, he didn't buy the butterfly. They want to go for the Roshan, but Roshan is not up, so they should go for the bottom racks. Because three heroes are still dead, guys, guys. This is way too weird. Uh, why are they not trying to pressure bottom racks? He just bought back with Gyro, you can at least bait out a buyback from Shadowfiend. And then you can back off because you still have some decent spells. Or you can push up a bit. I guess they're just too afraid that they will die with Jaro. And maybe they will lose the game because they bought out. But buying back was already a pretty big mistake then. If that's the case, if you're going to play so afraid. If you're going to buy back, you need to be confident. Oh, wow. And <laughs> DD spawns and, and uh, Roshan spawns too. That is freaking insane. Okay, you gotta kill that bird storm. Alright, okay, okay. Right. There's so many new ones anyway. So they're gonna run together, go for the rush, and. I mean, I guess the buyback is still fine because it meant that Tongfu don't do it. 
Plus the gyrocopter is alive. So now he has a talisman, and he should definitely not be dying in the next fight. Um, I feel like if he had a talisman in the last fight, he wouldn't have died either. But he had that slot open to buy something else. Yeah, super lag. So Jarcopter did get ulted by the LC. That's all I saw. And now they're getting run over. So Lion did die. And he's just gonna. Shafin gonna BKB TP out. The gem on the ground. They won't have a gem anymore. So they lost 3 for 1. But that time. Everyone was ready to help the gyrocopter, and he had a talisman, so... Missing 25% of the hits from Storm, SF, and LC is a lot of damage being taken away. I would also like to see Visage by, um... What's it called? A Solar Crest. That would be really good as well, to put it on the gyrocopter. Actually, yeah. Visage with Solo Crest would be insanely good in this game to put on Jaro. Jaro can do whatever the hell he wants and he'll never die. He can just chase down heroes. Just pew pew them. <clears throat> Lagging. <laughs> yeah, Solo Crest and Medallion Dust Stack. You can remove 17 armor. Plus 18 damage, Jaro. Yeah, so he did win the duel. It's freaking sweet. To win a duel when you're Jaro. Yeah, perfect world server, so not so perfect indeed. So right now Tomfu have like one word on the map, they're always afraid of Batrider, they have no idea where he's gonna be, when he's gonna jump someone, so they have to always stick together. Storm pretty much has lost all his Bloodstone Chargers, and can't really do as much, and he's still super afraid because his damage output has been diminished by a lot. Especially because of his bust on charges, he can't depend on them to like die, respawn fast, and then go in again. Um, and Gyrocopter is just way too farmed. What item did he drop? What the fuck? I'm forgetting something. What item is it? I forgot what item it was, his sixth one that he had. Before he had butterfly. So Bounty instantly dead. Viper getting dueled with the LC. Neither heroes are attacking each other at all. Yeah, GG. Oh, SNY, right. Yeah, the SNY. So drop the S and Y, picked up butterfly, has Aegis slot. He sold the S and Y. Okay. So Tung Fu pretty much ran out of damage to deal. I guess this Jaro this Jaro hit his peak very, very fast in this game because he has nineteen uh kills. But if he didn't, it could be a much different game. A lot of it you can Say it was this guy's fault, <laughs> who pretty much fed all game. 15 deaths is way too much for support the bounty hunter to have. Like you might as well play a different hero if you're just gonna end up dying so much like this. And it's not like Wings heroes were super good against bounty or something. I, f I just feel like his how he played, how he moved and stuff just wasn't good. Satanic 
And he still has his uh, Aegis left too. And here goes the Storm Spirit. 21 soul ult from Shadow. That's a pretty good buyback ult from Storm. He did a lot of uh, AoE damage, um, but Gyrocopter is just reviving with Aegis. No. And they've already taken one side of Rex. Losing those two heroes doesn't mean that much for them. They actually just can't deal any damage to them because they have no MKBs. Casually using his 5 second BKB. It's a butterfly viper. He really wants to be unkillable, huh? <laughs> what the hell did he just sell? Mech? Why did he sell the mech? Oh. Oh, Moonshard. Holy shit. I guess that's a pretty good way to build your items. Fucking sell something, get Moonshard, then hold on to the Moonshard until you have enough gold for your final item, then eat Moonshard. Yeah, forgot about this Moonshard item. Ah, that's the item the Sven could have also bought from that other game we watched. Uh, the E-Home game. Sven could have bought like Moonshard because he thought he was 6 slotted. He can't get any bigger. And he kept like feeding and buying back. He could have just kept farming, got to a Moonshard. And that would give him some attack speed that he would lose when he sells Mask of Madness. It's pretty decent. Just thought of that. So, bounty now buys Vlad's key. MKB soon, 1500 gold. I mean, that's pretty much their saving grace, is like this MKB on Shadow Fiend. And somehow they managed to do something to Jaro, but he has like buyback, right? Yeah, he has buyback. He's gonna bots back in. Next fight, he's surely gonna kill like one or two heroes. Only if he doesn't kill any heroes, but they won't be able to buy back. But the dire might want to mine their top tower. Radiant's bottom this tower is gonna fall very fast. Shadow Fiend is not. Oh, he does have enough for the MK. He sold the mech for it. Okay, that's pretty good. They really need to do this right now. He actually ghost up there before he went in. So are they wasting the flax? No, he did not use flak yet. Here comes the satanic and flak. And everybody's just dying. They can't deal with this gyro at all. Storm in the back went for someone and got glimmer kips. And now he's dead as well. GG. Godlike viper. Double moon shards. So, I still don't understand the LC pick. I mean, I sort of do because the way they play, they catch quite well. But Bounty Hunter was disgusting. <laughs> this game, I was so disappointed by this bounty. Every time I see bounty, I always like have high hopes for what they will do. But this one was definitely one of the worst bounties. How he played. Um, at some point, he became useless, but he didn't like help Koro get wards or something like if you become useless you can just become this ward bitch and just let the other hero get items because Koro who has agonims would be really good but instead it was like Koro knows he needs agonims but Bounty doesn't buy anything and then the Koro just goes agonims and then they have no vision on the map so they keep getting caught by Batrider and stuff 
of course there's a gem in the game they stop buying wards but before that they still already didn't have any vision or they can place very sneaky wards but that wasn't the case but overall this tongfu team is not very good i think they're definitely in the bottom tier for sure of this tournament what time is it 4 40 holy shit